Hello and welcome to the second in a series of talks we are giving about using brew variables to create your own brew recipes. You'll notice that it's now been titled Understanding Brew Variables because we first have to understand them before we can use them. So what is the first thing we need to understand? I've always said that grinding in coffee is a little bit of the dark heart of coffee. It's one of the one things that most people never consider. They spend way more money on all the other equipment. And actually the most important equipment you own is your grinder. When you grind coffee, you set it to a particular particle size and you hope that that particle size is what you're getting. But in actual fact, what you are getting is a collection of fines and boulders as well on each side of that particle size. Your ratio of fines to boulders is almost one to a million. You can see on the graph that Scott Rauer prepared on his website that this would be an ideal distribution where we've got mainly the target particle size and then a bump for fines and lower for boulders. This is almost an ideal world. It is not really how it, what happens. There are people who created sieves that allow us to separate the fines and the boulders and the ideal particle size but the results of the coffee brew at, at the end of that have been have had mixed response you can still buy these sieves most people believe in combining the brews of the different sieves what is why is this important well let's discuss about how the brew itself is extracting the coffee as you can see because we've got so many different particles we've always got fines so the one on the right is a fine and one on the left is a bowl it's obviously not a real size but you get the idea as the water surrounds the particle and gets goes into the particle it starts extracting the goodness out of out of the coffee the bigger the grind the less it's going to be extract it's extracted but the important thing is you want that soluble information, the soluble goodness out, out of the coffee. Since bowls are larger, they will give up their goodness slower than the fines. And the fines will end up actually over extracting, given enough time. Several studies have found that for pressure brewing, so this espresso or mocha pot, around 60 seconds is the point at which no more extraction will occur. While for filter or steeped coffees or boiled coffees, it's between three and six minutes. So basically at the end of that, that time, there's no more goodness for the coffee to give up. So, how does this affect us since we are brewing coffee? Well, remember the old ABCD? Well, that's what we're interested in. If you can imagine the particles extracting all these good good things we want we want some acidity and some bodies body some caramel some sweetnesses the the larger particles will give up their acidity quicker than they'll give up their body and their caramels and it'll be only towards the end that these flavors will be will deteriorate or become thin or bitter what is important as a brewer is to remember that the perception of the intensity that you have in your brew is actually subjective so what I consider acidic might not be what you consider acidic and what I consider sweet might not be what you consider sweet and this is one of the reasons why I'm not a big fan of these brewing recipes on websites while they are good guides they are not the be-all and end-all and using the word best is very subjective like the tastes of your coffee you need to learn to match your brew to your preferences. So before we continue, I just want to have a note about acidity and bitterness. This is something that I find people confuse a lot. Now acidity and acid are two different things. In fact, acidity uh, is made up of acids and so is bitterness. So on, on the, in coffee, the good acidity Acidity is normally comes from your um, both your organic and your non-organic and your un uh, inorganic uh, acids. There are between there are more than 30 organic and and slightly less than that are inorganic acids in coffee. 
what I've done is more or less to split them up into two, to the two types that we are most common. There are many others, but the most common is malic and citric. Malic is associated to apples and citric is associated to oranges or, or lemons. If we extract our coffee, the acidity is taken out of the coffee and the balance, the, the amount of acidity is correct for the brew, then our mouth will salivate and will be happy to accept all the sweetness. If, if it's bad, then what will happen is because there's no other particles extra extracted, it will become sour to us. We will perceive it as a sour taste because the acidity becomes dominant. The, the, the bright acidity becomes dominant in the brew. You also get bitter acids like phenolic and quinic. Quinic is normally associated with a, a, a mosquito brew, mosquito medicine. Um, and once again, you get good and bad. The, the good bitterness is normally associated with cocoa and chocolate, and even nut flavors. The bad is associated with charcoal or chemical. But one man's charcoal is another man's dark chocolate. And that is what makes coffee so complex and specifically why you need to match the brew to not only your personal preferences, but to your equipment that you use. We've already covered the grinder and how that, what happens to the grinder. And if you match your brewing with your grinding and your equipment, then you can get a balance. The idea is to get a balance between your acidity, your body and your caramels. And then that will give you the brew you want. So in summary, what have we covered today? Essentially, taste is subjective. This is extremely important because only you can decide what, how the coffee tastes best. You need to consider your grind distribution when you're making coffee. What type of grinder do you have? How, how is it grinding the coffee? Are you grinding too fine or too coarse? Is that creating a, a larger distribution of your, your particles? That's going to affect your final brew. And always remember that there are more fines than boulders. So you want to try to get a balance where your fines are not becoming totally over extracted in comparison to your boulders, which means that you will have a very bitter brew. The coarser your grind, the more acidity you'll get. And that's basically because the larger particles extract slow, slower. And of course, the first thing is going to extract out of a larger particle is acidity. And you're only going to get acidity and that's going to give you bad acidity. Less water creates more acidity. So because the water, the amount of water in the coffee is really inversely related to acidity, you're going to find that if you put too little water in your coffee, you're going to get a lot more acidity. This is specifically in pressure brews. But what's also important is that you don't want to put too much water because then you end up getting a deteriorated brew or a bitter brew. So there is a balance. A good level of acidity means that you'll have sweetness in the brew you need to so that, that's what, very important you want your sweetness and your acidity to work with the body so what we need to do is match our water dose and time using grind size to the brew that we like that's a short small little introduction today and i just like to, there's a lot of thanks on the screen I'm planning to do more of these. We had a bit more time. Uh, when I have a bit more time, uh, please put any comments and share if necessary. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.